trading is about knowing the field. Foreseeing the opportunity. Executing at the right moment. Timing is everything. Hello, Dream Team, and welcome along to another episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Rugby in partnership with City Index, the leading provider of spread betting, CFD, and FX Trading. It's good to have you with us. Hope you had a good bank holiday. The Lord and the Hask are alongside once again, both full to the brim of both Asher and Easter eggs. <laughs> Does that make sense? Full of of Asher there he is. 49. What is that? What is Asher, anyway? I don't actually know. There you go. Well, imagine I'd like to fill up Asher. Question, that. <laughs> I'd like to fill up Asher. I'm not joking. Um, happy Easter. How was it? Oh, I had a fantastic Easter. I went to watch the wife compete down in How did Norfolk. she get on? Uh, yeah, she had um, one that did really well. Um, finished 10th, which doesn't sound like it did really well, but it's quite, <laughs> it's, quite yeah. it's one of those sports where um, the rider will still be happy because it went. Clear show jumping, clear cross country, no time falls, everything went smoothly. And then it just comes down to dressage. And unfortunately, nine other horses did slightly better dressage than, right. than she did. Can you tell so, when so you're it's watching? A hard, it's a hard thing to judge because they're, they're happy because the progress of the horse was good. Right. Uh, and then, unfortunately, um, Class Affair just had uh, tripped in the water and had to run out. Um, but it still went, went generally, improvement was seen. When you're watching Zed do dressage, do you know what you're looking at? Hell no. Right. There's, there's obvious things um, in flying changes and whether they're on time and things like that. <laughs> right. but, uh, 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 but no, I've got no idea on, on the actual because they're judged on how they how they walk and uh, their extended trot and. Right. Um, yeah. So it's not no. bad. You've got more uh, than no, you've got I, more I, than I thought you'd have. I know. I yeah. I know all the movements and half pass and shoulders in and all sorts, but I don't know what is a good shoulder in and what is right. not a good right. shoulder in and what is. Well, neither does her horse apparently. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Joking, it's, it's a bit like me in the boxing. So I've, my, I'm struggling a bit at the moment. But I had been doing a bit of sparring, mm. and I was being told that I'd won rounds when I got absolutely no idea what I'd done, and I'd lost rounds and I got absolutely no <laughs> idea what I'd done. The magic of sport. Yes. Yeah. Um, Asher is a Hebrew name meaning happy and blessed. Oh, well, I am full of that. Then. Are you yeah. happy and blessed? I, I think so. Were you full of chocolate? Cur some would say cursed, others say blessed. <laughs> uh, yeah. What, what, how was your? Am um, I full of chocolate? Um, mm. No, uh, I was full of rosé. On um, Saturday, I had a little birthday celebration at a certain location in the middle of the country. Um, it was good fun. Completed rosé. Uh, lost the ability to speak at about six o'clock. <laughs> had, had a lovely time good. with a few uh, few friends. Um, my young wife was there um, for a bit and then went to bed. And I stumbled <laughs> in at a certain time in the morning. And uh, yesterday was, was one of those... Bits where we could have stayed at the place, but I sort of felt like I just needed to get home into a safe environment. And I just sat eating Pringles and dip um, and then fell asleep, went to bed at 7.30, woke up at 9.30 today, refreshed, ready to go. What, what's amazing about that story is you've put absolutely no detail in it at all. And yet I think everybody knows exactly <laughs> yeah, what it is. Exactly we what went happened. to a place and I can't tell you what time I went to bed and then I went home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's the best way to tell and a story. No one got incriminated. Okay. I didn't yeah. offend anyone. Um I had a few, a couple of people hijack me for photos. You're actually not allowed to have photos at this particular place or any of those places. Um, and I, I'm too polite to say no, bugger off. But I did. So there's probably some photos uh, lurking around of me looking absolutely steaming. Um, right. But, you know. Plus agent. I'd like to say, if you were to catch me drunk, would it surprise you? You know, it's like when you, I've built such a... But, uh, honest appraisal of myself normally in the media that if you went, oh, James Haskell called me a fucking prick, no one's going to be shocked. No. I fell out of a car, had a fight. Said something rude, offended someone. <laughs> sort there wouldn't of be, into who you are. Yeah, there'd be no <laughs> yeah. surprise. You know, yeah. if you went, oh, saw Chris Robshaw, cool, you know, do that. And we're like, oh, did yeah. he? That's awful. James Haskell's done what? Oh, yeah. Lucky yeah. he didn't kill him. Yeah. Anyway, have <laughs> a drink. Um, can I say one other thing? So you you had a nice Easter service? Uh, lovely Easter service. What I was going to say? Double church. It's like, oh. I was about, it's like being back at school, double church. Church yeah. at nine and then church at 11. I, yeah, it's weird. I don't, I was forced to go to church every Almost every weekend for my entire, well, from sort of age 10 to 18, and then a few times in the week. 
and it's just oh, forced in it, forced religion. So it's one of those when you get in, you look at the order of service, you go, actually, this shouldn't be that long. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then <laughs> they hit you, and then you in 45 well, minutes but, from but nowhere. Then, but then you find out the choir are singing four songs. Yeah. They make a song that looks like it should take two minutes, 14 minutes, because yeah. yeah. they go to from verse one to the chorus, back to the first yeah. verse, back to the third verse, back up to the chorus. Couple and of desk cans. Like, that is so true, actually. You know, I, every, I always get the, the pro- program. I don't think it's called that. <laughs> the program events, and I do. do you get you look, your signed afterwards. By the, uh, <laughs> oh, the I, please remind me to tell you a story about that in, in two seconds. But I literally got got the program. You do, and you go, oh well, that's that's the Lord's prayer. That's done quite quickly. That what they got to get you is a bit where it's like a desk count and a thing where it's just one line. Or the sermon. It, yeah. And yeah. It could, a good sermon could take seven minutes. Yeah, yes. A bad one could be an hour and yeah, ten. Yeah. yeah. And, but it's, it's the extra bits where they, it's a choir or a musical part that drags it on and then the hymns, you see it once and then you've got to repeat it again. There's a lot of trickery going on. A good service, 25 minutes including the walk-in. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd say. But no, I'll tell you this. So my, my grandfather was a, a, an entomologist at... Um, Imperial. What uh, is entomology? Is that skin? No, it was into uh, bugs and like lo- oh. you know he was he was he was very um, instrumental in helping deal with the locust um, plagues in Africa and decimation of food and all this kind of stuff. And he got an award from the Queen. Um, and with that award means that you can get um, I could get christened at St Paul's Cathedral, which I was, and I can get married at St Paul's Cathedral. And he um, unfortunately passed away, and as part of the thing, could have a service at St Paul's Cathedral in the smaller chapel. So. Went there, obviously, a really sad day. My dad's really upset. You know, grandfather's a bit of a legend. And we're there, and, and um, obviously, his coughing, coughing gets taken, carried out. And just as the service finished, the um, priest comes up to me and goes, oh, James, you couldn't sign this for me? And made me sign the order of the service, my <laughs> dead grandfather's funeral. And I honestly looked at him for 30 seconds like, a bit weird, the priest taking the piss in the middle of a really sad, moving service as my dad's dabbing his eyes and the <laughs> coffins just making it to the back of the hearse. And I literally signed out, you know, signed the thing to, you know, Father Doodah. Thanks so much. He's like, oh, I'll keep that. It's like, wow. Where, where, where's the line? Where's the line? Where, where'd you go? I think you might step over the yeah. mark. I think the line's become a dot by that point, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. I like that. You are full of surprises, though. Entomologist. Yes, really? incredible. I mean, that? obviously, I'm, I mean, hopefully he's related to me, but judging by my level of intelligence, <laughs> perhaps he wasn't, but yeah. What I was going to say, um, having seen your very nice uh, procession into the... Where was it? Were you in Windsor? Yeah, St. George's Temple. I, and I mean this genuinely. I think you're dressing really well at the moment. Oh, thanks. Sharp suit. You, I think at Cheltenham you were dressing really well as well. You yeah. might need a little tailor on the go. Uh, well, Kevin and the Dandy generally help me out, but then actually, uh, and so do, there's a company called, uh, 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 I always don't know whether I pronounce it right, Chapar, C H A P A R, which are like, they, they're stylists that just send you clothes. Right. So they look at, they look at stuff and then they look and they go, okay, I'll send you a box. And then you pick out stuff that you like, send back what you don't like. You never have to go and oh, yeah. shop. That I, is my I, I don't shopping. have you down as a snazzy dresser, but I think every time I see you now at a, at a work do, well, I'm, you're I'm, looking mint. I'm always going to blame uh, James Sleater from Canada Dandy if, if I don't look good, it's his fault. Mm. Right. But it's C- amazing. Ching plug, ding. You know, yeah. obviously the boy from Wakefield. Yeah. Do you know what I mean that, that slowly, you know, when he first came up, he had like raggedy clothes, a flat cap <laughs> covered in bits cold. of coal. Yeah, he, <laughs> covered in coal. he had a bicycle with a loaf in it. Yeah, yeah, he had that. Came up on a dust yeah, car yeah, and now yeah. he's riding around an open top car. He had elocution lessons like Pygmalion to be told <laughs> yeah. to speak. Ear a queen. No, no, don't. That's not how you say it. And then slowly. Great Northern accent, that as well, <laughs> isn't it? Ear a queen. Ear a queen. That's down my way in Dorset. Um, Sorry. All right, mate. No, that way. There's two of us still draws it. Have another go. Oh, God. I can't remember. Come on, have you a run-up. Okay, okay. What, uh, Northern. 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 Northern Pretty much every time I'm there. Do you really? Yes. No, I, I never ring the bell. Obviously. Yeah. Um, but no, it's just hollow down quite, the corridor. Is, yeah. Is it a bit like um, strange coming to America? Do you get into a bath and a, 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 a <laughs> the royal penis? Yeah. 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 No. Oh, okay. But I, no. I'd make that as a point of thing. Going, Listen, I know you know want to modernise. Can I get? A, <laughs> a, a, can I get a giant bath, please? Right. Um, Easter is not only a time for chocolates. Actually, I got through quite a lot of gin this weekend as well. <laughs> it's lucky we all like gin, isn't it? Yeah. Trans, tra- transplaining chocolate for gin. I don't even know if that's a word. It's not. Um, 
uh, changing, changing job for Jen. The, there is also a lot of touring that's about to happen because obviously all the grassroots clubs go off on tour. Harry Payne's actually off with Richmond Minis next weekend. Is that a father and son? Sur- no, because we're away. We're in Sheffield. So who's going to get a surrogate dad? Uh, <laughs> he's got his mate Bertie and, and Bertie's dad, George. Lovely. Taking him off. Lovely. What goes on tour stays on tour. Yeah. Um, all the grassroots clubs are off and about. We're going off on our tour as well. And I think we're sort of leading into a, a, a show on touring and tours, <laughs> particularly off the back of Jack Knoll. Anyone else slightly weekend? nervous about our tour yet? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I'm sort of. Are oh, you? Yeah. What are you nervous about? Uh, I don't know. I think it's just it's just getting that Sheffield one done. I think, isn't it? Yeah. But it's no different to the things we've done loads of times. If, yeah. But it's just the crowd is bigger. I'm a peacock. You'll let me fly. I'm fine. <laughs> The peacocks fly. No, that's the point. Right. <laughs> I was going to say pheasant. As Kiwi. Well. They, they sort of fly pheasants. Yeah, like Phoenix. I think it'll be really good fun. I think when I think we get in the groove, we'll be absolutely fine. There's, Jack- going, to be, there's going to be a few where uh, we're going to have to sort of get through to work through it. We've got a few parties, haven't we? Yeah, we have. The yeah. night before. I'm so. worried about show two. <laughs> I'm what, I'm, the only thing I'm concerned about is just finding the level. Right. So we obviously set up this podcast during the first COVID. We haven't really met a lot of our fans. We had a couple of live events. And we have some... Incredible- most of them away. We, we have, we those have, that have stuck with us. We have some very loyal fans. Obviously, the, the trailer for the first Good, Good the Bad, the Bad, we went to number one across the world, um, which is pretty special. So we know we've got a good following. So I think I'm looking forward to meeting them. But also just in this kind of world we live in at the moment, social media, is we sort of want to tell a few stories, but just don't want to get us cancelled halfway through. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You do a bit. Well, I do actually a little bit, yeah. I just, yeah. I just want to just, I want to play, I want well, to see about Andrea from Hello is going to be lurking in the, um, yeah. in the crowd. We, work, we walk that line. We do. And we have to. Well, you two do. I'm trying desperately to try and keep you on the right side of it. <sighs> I don't know. By the end of this tour, you could, yeah. <laughs> we'll have get we'll have pushed you. You swear, over. you swear loads now. So you've gone. You're on our level. No, yeah. I don't. Yeah. You know, I met some guy. that was oh, a big fan, big fan. Love the pod. I was like, yeah, oh, even the swearing. You know, I'm a real man in the world. I was like, oh god, if that's the <laughs> if that's the level, <laughs> that's the level. You're oh, you're crazy. I like a bit of swearing, but not too much. Um, Jack Noel. Jack Noel is the sort of the spark to our show on tour. Yeah. I mean, as must be, he's a good tourist. As dares do, as dares go, wearing a monster shirt to watch your team Exeter at Thoman Park play Monster is up there? I would say it's... Pro- One of the people. Yeah, I would say it's pretty ballsy. I'd say what's what's interesting is that actually, obviously, it's just very funny and no one would care. Yeah. But um, some people would have got upset by that. No, I'm, I, I promise you, I once took a, wore a shirt. No, oh, well, so uh, Ben Teo. Yeah. Do you remember he uh, posed in that Ireland shirt? Oh, yeah, he did. And everyone went mental. I'm like, I can't do that. I did that once I put a shirt no, on. He did that before he then came to play for England. Yeah. When he was playing for Leinster, yeah. he posted in Ireland. Yeah, who cares? I don't. No, no, but people do care. So I'm, I mean, I would I say heard that... the rumour that Jack Knowles actually signed him for Munster and it was, he was over there for a meeting. <laughs> that. Just, yeah. that is a lie, by the way. Well, <laughs> or is it? Oh, is it? Or is it a double bluff? <gasps> no, I think it's quite Watch cool. Space. I did that once at Wasps and uh, put on another shirt from another team and put it in the group and everyone got a bit upset. Oh, I don't think it's a bit disrespectful. I was like, oh, relax. All right. Um, we did ask him um, to to see if he wanted to come and explain who Stag, why he was there, who made him wear the Munster kit, but we think he's still going. Right? Yes, <laughs> I, I would suspect he is, yeah. What I did like is obviously he got he broke his arm in that Paris game, but prior to that, in the England, uh, in the France-England game, in the last round of the Six Nations, prior to that, he was like, I'm off the booze, I'm not drinking anymore, it's really helped my performance. I suppose while well, you've got a little interlude. I did like cover. the fact that he also found the tightest Munster shirt he could possibly yeah. get into. <laughs> yeah, Painted on. Holding everything in place. Yeah. Um, okay. So, do we want to start? Should we start with our tour? Do you want to start with the tours that you went on? Should we talk about where touring fits into the rugby landscape and why it's so important? Well, where do you want to begin. With it, obviously, touring is massive. It's, it's it's two separate things now. We tour for the grassroots clubs. It's still very very old school. I keep getting asked to go on the Minch and Hampton like summer tour, and I'm like, lads, you you don't want me there. The last time you sent me a picture, you were pouring, dousing each other in alcohol and setting each other on fire. Right. Um, <laughs> so, dude, that's why they do you want you there. Yeah, no, right, it attracts a certain level it, of media attention. Okay, yeah, yeah, yes, as is, point. it would not be good for them. No, right. Um, uh, I think um, they've got less to lose than you, though, somehow. Uh, well, yeah, well, but that's the point. He knows Fraser's himself. De- Fraser's yeah. definitely got less hair now. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's uh, yeah they have, but it's, you know, uh, I'm not sure they, they would... They'd like that heat, right? Um, but quite, it might still literary. happen. Yeah, <laughs> might still happen. But I think you know it's quite good because we sort of went through early times where tours weren't too professional. 
Yeah. Whereas now I think it's a whole different kettle of fish. I don't know what Hass says about that. 2016, it's more clean fun that you end up having rather than... There's obviously a midweek veg can still have a few beers and, yeah. and get into a little few scrapes, but nothing major. Yeah, I mean, I've mean, I, I took, I've had a few good tours in my time. I'd say, I had I just thinking about it now, it's a flashback to an under-19s tour in, um, in, in France, in Vichy. Oh, yeah. And we got very drunk and Tom Croft and I stole a boat. Oh. Um, and we thought, it was so funny, how we are stealing a boat. We rode this boat into this midless lake, stole it. It was a great time. And then we just sat there like, well, right, we'll what, do what, what are we doing now? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing now? And then we... It was like, oh, we might, we could actually probably die out here because one of the oars fell in the water. We like, <laughs> had to paddle back. And as we went to paddle back in, the boat, there was a big dock. The boat just started, I got out of it, just crofty floating underneath it. <laughs> oh, I started, he managed to get back out of it. And then I went back and we, I, try, I think I tried to bring a couple of girls back to the hotel. The receptionist wouldn't let what, me. By boat? Not by boat. We found them lurking on the way back. And then, um, the receptionist wouldn't let us sit, and I, and I think I spanked him and said he was being a naughty boy. And then and then I woke to bed to bed, no memory of it, woke up and yeah, it didn't go down Did too people well. mind that? I think he mind it. He, he, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think he, you know, I don't think he was into S and M. Uh, maybe it was afterwards. <laughs> right. But no, I think it started. There are those moments, but we didn't have camera phones then. So kind of those moments where stuff stuff started. I'd say predominantly, especially with England, I changed my whole mindset after 2011, um, and just basically was never gonna. That was a hell of a tour. Yeah, never gonna do anything on tour like that. Um, you know, never gonna drink or try because it just wasn't worth the time. I'd rather wait two two days after until we went to Ibiza. I went to Vegas and actually had fun as opposed to doing it on duty where everyone's trying to sort of stitch you really and yeah. catch you out. And that obviously that tour was, <laughs> went pretty turbo on a number of a number of fronts. Tours as a, because you also had a bit of am amateur, or amateur ethos, let's say, yeah. in the early part of your career. Yeah, the, two, the first one, South Africa in 2000 was, um, was very, <laughs> still very amateur. Really? Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, but I think all the way up to 2003, I mean, even in the World Cup in 2003, we went out after every game. And then, you know, we always had this thing, the best way to get over jet lag was get on it. So we had two days on it as soon as we got there. And um, so, yeah, <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was, it was good. I was just thinking actually about the, t the tours. I'd say the age group stuff, actually, it, you know, the boat yeah. stealing soil, was, they, they were pretty real loose. I remember, I remember the first one, under 19, sword to South Africa, New Zealand one. Went down to the room, all the Kiwis got excited, never had a drink before, like throwing TVs out the window and all this kind of stuff, like <laughs> trying to rise up security. That was pretty terrifying. Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. like you look back at it now and think, oh my God, what the hell were you lot doing? In the professional era now, I mean, so 2016, obviously, with England was yeah. was your finest moment in an England jersey in 2017 as well. How far have they come? towards now? Are they, is there, is there fun and... There is. Or is it much more... Kind of straight. No, there is. Get, you're there to do a job. There is. I mean, um, you know, 2016 was great. Obviously, I mean, the best, the best part about I think being on tour is people do get up to stuff, and then you have to come clean to the group. And I said before, Johnny May just does the whole <laughs> the ticking clock on the yeah. mic, and just does it for so long that someone, you know, goes right, lads, anyone got anything to say? Johnny's like <laughs> the whole time until everyone's like, oh, fuck, okay, I shagged her, I shagged her, I shagged her. <laughs> right, get up, tell the story, what actually happened. And just, I love those kind of moments. But I'd say. Yes, there's still a bit of fun, but, you know, I mean, even in uh, 2015, one of the players went out on a night out and um, uh, and I was, in the, I was in the team and we were playing France that day and he wasn't in the squad and he had a night out and um, came back in a police car, right? And you'd think that he would just go, I'll go to bed, but because he'd missed me, he decided to come into the um, uh, physio room and everything steaming. And obviously physios are notorious snitches um, and they uh, obviously told you know, the, the head coach and he got reprimanded because he'd woke up, basically he'd woken up in a doorway. A family had tried to open the door, found him waking up, woken up in a doorway and they'd um, obviously called the police because they were like really, he was incoherent and he just arrived in handcuffs. And they let him off, but he walked in obviously got found out because he could have said he was ill, but unfortunately he got found out. So that was still, what was that, 2015? Yeah. That's pretty, you know, but I'd say, I'd say the modern stuff doesn't, doesn't really happen. Like you have a few stories and nights out, but it's just so, I, I think it's where well, you've got a responsibility not, it's not really worth it, you know, where you could have some real fun and do stuff, but it's it's just not worth the, the hassle. Yeah. The, the better you tour, the better you play? Without doubt. I was, or I was going to say, the better you tour, the worse you play. <laughs> but I think, it, I think you've got to know, you've got to know, everyone's different. Um, yeah. I was always, the better, the better you tour, but I was getting taught off Jason, Lowell, and me and Bolsham to their wings. It was, uh, we, had, we didn't really have a choice on it. Um, 
but yeah, it, it almost gets you in trouble sometimes. You, you know the you know the boats and hose stories, don't you? I, I told you that. Which one's that? So we were in um, we were it's in got a lovely title. Great by the way. Sight. <laughs> So we were in Sydney, and it was um, 2010. We'd come off, uh, I think, an all right Six Nations or whatever, gone on tour to Australia um, and Napier as well. Two games in, two test series in Australia, one game against the New Zealand Maldives in um, New Zealand. And after the first test, the sort of midweek veg, like, oh, we're not really going to play. And one of the, one of our, um, Ugo knew a guy that used to go to Wellington um, who was a investment banker who was living in um, Wolverine's, Penthouse apartment in <laughs> Hugh Jackman. Hugh, Hugh Jackman's Jackman. penthouse apartment. So we got talk. He said, "Oh, do you boys fancy lunch on a day off?" So he's like, "Yeah, no problem. We're going to do it on the under the viaducts and Sydney waterfront." So no, myself, a few other characters turned up for uh, for this lunch, and uh, it was like you know, not a little bit of serving your blanc, relaxing, chatting. You know, we had a day off the next day, and we were supposed to meet the whole team later for a team dinner, but you had the day off to do what you want. Um, and so it was fine. We didn't think we were going to play. We played the night before, so we're all eating food, and then. Next, the table next door was this woman wearing like an, an army, a red coat from like the Queen's Guard jacket with huge bolt-ons. Ridiculous, right? And she's sitting there and we're chatting away, drinking, drinking. And the, um, this, this bloke goes, oh, would the, could you, you know, could this lady have a photo with you? So I turned around and said, yeah, if you want to, turn around. And when I said, but the button was under more pressure than we're going to be on this tour, doesn't work out. I mean, it was a lot of tension on it. Yeah. She's standing there. And we said, yeah, you can have a photo. As we went to the photo, this bloke pulls out the most professional <laughs> telephoto lens. And I thought, oh, it was going to be, she was going to rip her top open. It was like a stitcher. Because it happened to uh, Phil Green, didn't it? And Joe yeah. Worsley outside Edinburgh, apparently. Yeah, after, actually, tra after training uh, yeah. in, in Scotland. It's like, oh, can we have a photo? And, and like got a group of lads in. A few boys sort of went, hmm, let's not do this. And we sort of walked away. And as they took the photo, but <laughs> And so the journalist, and the, sun, who, the, the journalist who did that, messaged me into the show because I had told the story once before and he was like actually it was against this game just details it's quite funny but uh, so it's a yeah it, was, it is a true story so no, we had the photo I crept onto the end because like, I do not want to be involved in this the cans come out very unlike you very yeah. unlike me um, so we had the photo I thought nothing more about it anyway after lunch they'd arranged for us to get on a boat and go around Sydney Harbour so everyone's a bit steamed up and as we got towards the boat he said I've got a bit of a surprise for you and as we got the boat there's 10 girls in lingerie on the boat right the PR girls like you know they work for an agency they're just going to serve drinks and I said okay so we're on this boat lingerie all the lads are really super excited handing out drinks bear in mind this is on England tour middle of the day in Australia in Sydney handing out drinks and the boat starts pulling out and I'm um, I, I'm at the back of the boat and, I, and uh, <laughs> I'd say Doz is on it obviously Doz at the front talking all the lads are spread out some of them you know relaxing reclining and as we're pulling out the, uh, the harbour I see this guy swing round with an even bigger <laughs> telephoto lens, swing around and went, lads, get down. I've dived down the side of the boat. <laughs> no one else has heard me. And the boat's like, snap, 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 we've left. Anyway, had a, had a real nice time going around the, um, the, the harbour, looking at everything. Sightseeing. <laughs> yeah, sight sightseeing. Um, a lot of motorboats around. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then we got to uh, got some dinner, met up with the lads. Everyone's like, oh, what a day. You know, everyone's steaming. Great. Had a great time. Thought nothing more of it. And then when we played Australia, I ended up being on the on the bench we beat Australia in Australia um, and coming off everyone's celebrating what a massive you know John Wells what a great game everyone's high-fiving and we come into the change room and Doz is like this like looking at me with the hand like cutting his throat motion I was like oh, fuck what's happened John O just comes James this is how he sounds James I need to have a word with you in the showers I was like oh, fuck what have I done now and he's like have you have you been sleeping with prostitutes on a boat and I was like no he goes well we've got news of the world we've got a story you and some of the lads have been on a boat full of prostitutes um, and you've been having a sex party all around Sydney. And I, and I was like, no, John, I haven't. And he was like, Doz are getting here. He's like, how's that happened? I'm like, no, 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 we, we didn't. We haven't done anything. I said, there were the PR girls that we didn't do anything. It's absolutely fine above board. And, uh, you know, and then the media guys there, he goes, well, they've got the story. Are you telling the truth? So I said, yeah, we, we haven't done anything. So anyway, thought nothing more of it. They're having that media storm. You know, everyone's panicking, typical RFU, rushing around, making it 10 times fucking worse. But actually, <laughs> that was the first time that they, they actually turned around and said, no, you don't have a story. And it went from the front page, it was front page. And because we won, it was like, you know, it was going to be front page, England players in, in prostitute scandal. And it turns out the woman with the big cans had, um, was a madam, a famous madam, and because we got a photo with her, the whole story had got together that the boat was full of, they were her girls on this boat. They weren't. 
And I was calling up this investment banker, going, you fucking prick. <laughs> what have you done? You know, I said, this is my career I've been smoked. He's like, I promise you, I promise you, they're he, not. He went, 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 that's got nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah. been smoked, I said, I know where you live, Hugh Jackman's, we're going to burn it down. Um, anyway, so we got, the, the story ended up coming out and it was it went from page one yeah. to page eight, Boats and Hose was the, was the title. <laughs> and um, but obviously redacted most of it because it was bollocks. Yeah. But you see the picture of the boat and there's Doz at the front taking a photo of everyone. Lads, like reclining, one of the one of the uh, pictures they'd done that thing where they did a zoom in bubble. Yeah. You could see exactly who it was. That particular player was getting married. That uh, that when he got back from the tour, and then all you see is my feet sticking <laughs> sticking out of the side. And like, that was yeah. And that was that's not every day that you get accused of doing that. And that's just not that was just normal procedure. You know Balotelli's "Why Always Me" yeah. T-shirt. Yeah. I think that would be a very good yeah. GBNR yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For you. replica. Yeah, but it's Why just little, yeah. I mean, it's just a little. Little, little, you know, little scandals that, that go on. Best tourists? Well, Leonard and, Leonard and Lowell. Are Oz, there any Oz, unsuspecting Azzy, ones? Oz, Oz, Austin's a very good tourist as well. Is he? Yeah, because he is loose. Right. And Energetic. He and he, yeah, and he doesn't care. Um, so he, he is actually a very good what tourist. Made, what made Jace the king of the tourists? Well, he, well, he just, he just never, he never tired. He just, he was... <laughs> He he was there. He was relentless. He just <laughs> hollow legs, so you never could fill him up. And then he and he'd just keep going. Uh, and he'd always because of his history, he knew someone everywhere. Right. So he'd get you know between him and Lol. If you couldn't get into any place in the world, you you were strugg you were struggling. They just knew everything uh, everywhere. So maybe if I look back now, it, it wouldn't have quite seemed that way. But when you're young, and you just you, you never have to queue. You never had to do anything. It was it was just following those two, the 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 show that those two were. I mean, I, you know, and Jace is the nicest human being on the planet with the yeah. best memory for people as well. Like, where he met them, when he met them, it was incredible. Um, so yeah, he was uh, yeah. He, so, so he, he had, could always find someone to party with as well. He had the keys to every city, as it were, and knew everybody. Even when he didn't necessarily know the right person, did he also have the gift of the gab? To oh get yeah, behind the velvet rope as has. Yeah, so. yeah, of course he did. He's, with his little cockney, cockney slang. He's 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 always got the right thing. But then you know him and Lowell would be the first one to grease a few palms yeah. if it needed to be as well. So you know you're learning from the you're learning from the uh, elite when you when you were hanging out with those two. A lot good. of readies and hat to hand. And that's why just... me and Bolsh were just literally <laughs> in the, like in their slipstreams. Yeah, in their slipstreams, just following, soaking it all up. Um, and did 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 you see Phil Greening's a good tourist as well, by the way. Okay, very good tourist, because... professional operator. Yeah, <laughs> he's a professional operator, long time single, right. so um, and a lot of fun. I just a lot of fun. <laughs> he's such a good boy, Phil. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's so, mad. the yeah. last the last to tell a million stories. What about the modern lot? Um, it's a very different type of touring. Yes, it is complete again because just... a lot of people would point at you actually as an energizer and a. Uh, the it's only thing what it is I, I, I even though I have that sort of uh, demeanour as a sort of a bit of a party I actually wasn't like that and, that and and I'd get a lot of heat from the guys going oh where were you where were you, you went on a night out I mean I'd say someone like Danny Kerr no, it's, not, it's not necessarily that you still energise people to get out and do stuff oh yeah, we, yeah we, do, we, we, we do that but I'd say someone like Danny Kerr was pretty good um, you know he was always being the thick of it I mean I you know I mean I went Fodes on. wasn't scared of it no Fodes was absolutely not scared of it um <laughs> No, I just think, yeah, I mean, I, if I was on England Duty now, I would be the one thing I'd say to any manager who's got a good security team, make sure everything's covered, secure, don't let other people in. Not like, not, I mean, not like, I think I told about the Lions ones, where, you know, like you got, we had some elite security team um, with England who were like brilliant. And when we got on the Lions, you think, oh, the Lions are going to be, going to be spot on, right? They had the security team. And the first dinner that uh, the president went to, he got manhandled, like thrown into a wall. So it came back and we're like, oh, next day we're all like, you know, with midweek veg, our own security. It's like, you boys did well last night. And like seething. It's like, you know, the, the only person on the tour that needed actual security, <laughs> you let him get filled in. I'm like, yeah, whatever, James. I said, well, you know, uh, did he get filled in or not? Like, wow, well, you know, we, we, you know, we would, our tension was elsewhere. I said, well, just look after the old man because he needs to stop getting filled in. Then anyway, we then go to a gym and, one of the guys, guys in the gym, the security are there, supposed to just be watching. Security guy is um, is doing sh shadow boxing in the mirror and doing biceps. And one of the Kiwi, one of the Kiwi uh, people in Christchurch starts attacking one of the lads, like right, going, "Yeah, you fucking prick, get off!" You know, having a massive row. 
We've had to pull him off and go, listen, mate, relax, go away. Security have come back 10 minutes, like, what's going on? Don't worry about it, mate. How, how's, your, <laughs> how's your biceps, right? So we were getting into them, and it was getting slowly more, they were getting slowly more incompetent. And one guy was like, oh, look, James, you've got to stop taking the piss. We're working really hard. You don't understand the demands on us, right? The same guy, I popped down at like, um, like 12 30 at night to get a water from the team room. Yeah. And he's like this on the sofa, just asleep <laughs> in the corridor. I crept past him, took a photo with him, <laughs> crept off and put in put in the whole team group. It's the security at their best again. We then at another place and got a security guy is, is practicing karate chops on a bag, but like not even like proper discipline. It's like karate chopping, kicking with his legs only get about a foot off the air. Awful. All these people come piling in the back exit, going through the lads' kit, asking for autographs, disrupt the session. <laughs> Like security, <laughs> he's got his headphones in, axe kicking everything like your dickheads, right? So, so they got so bad that I was relentless. I was like, "You guys aren't even security. You're like stewards. You're like crowd stewards." He's like, "Oh, how dare you!" And I served. I went, "Well, not where, where, but then it's like, what, he's, what are you doing?" And he, one guy was really staring at me. One meeting, so oh, you know, one like, of the security guys. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, you give me that thousand yard stare, are you, mate?" He's like, "You want to kill me, don't you?" He goes, "Yeah." I goes, I'll tell you why he wouldn't, because you're so fucking useless, probably forget where the body was, you craphead. <laughs> get, get caught. So they were so they were so wound up. Just so, making friends. Making friends. By the by the end of the week, we got into them so much that on the last night of the tour, just on the draw, everyone's on the smash. We said to them, listen, keep the noises away when we're trying to have a, a nice time. Just let us be so we can drink at the table. Everyone's drinking at the table. These two beautiful girls come up to the table. <laughs> One of the security guys tackles the one through the table. I was like, what are you doing? Was, you said keep people away. Not the fit birds, you fucking idiot. What are you doing? Uh, very Not funny. great. Very good. Why, are tour why, why is touring important? Uh, because, like The whole thing with, um, with teams is making memories, isn't it? That's the whole thing that touring is and what brings people closer to a team. Well, sort of Haskin and I always talk about what the stuff that Saris did to make them, what Exeter have done to make that, them such a good team what you know the feeling that you get from Quinns at the moment in terms of uh, what they're trying to do uh, what obviously Al Sanderson's taking up at sale you know you spend that quality time together then and make memories because that's why Sarri's went on all those trips you know when they're in their away changing rooms they bring all those photos of those times together to remind people about you know the sort of band of brotherhood that they were and obviously the wolf pack um, sort of mentality is that they they they're better together. Um, I think that's what touring is. It's about make, really it it strengthens those bonds of friendships and actually makes you part of something. Yeah. And that is what touring is all about. And uh, and and when a tour goes well, you know, all you get is good memories, good times, and uh, and you actually want to play more for those guys. You want to put your body on the line a bit better. And um, I, Am I wrong? I yeah, no, you are. You are. I'm just, I'm just thinking about. Am I right? I think I'm right. I think about You're the, um, Nolan. The, the band of brothers thing. But you know, there's always few, there's always someone that gets few. left left behind. You know, like, you know, everyone's like buddy system, right? Where's your mate? Where, yeah. As long as your roommate makes it, you're fine. But you'll always get on the bus and be waiting. Be like, where's so and so? You're like, what do you mean? He'll be not in his room. Yeah. I mean, that was that was what I'm HP playing. was the word, was terrible for that. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. Paul. Yeah. Well, he never played for England again after his first cap. Yeah, like you just refuse to get up in the next day, and it's like Clive's like, "Where is he?" And he's like, "Oh, tell him I'll get my own, I'll get my own flight back." <laughs> and then it was like dust; <laughs> he was never seen again. Wow! And it was the same. Uh, sorry, HP. I hope you don't mind. It was the same for Gloucester as well. So HP, unbelievable player, was such a good player, Henry Paul, but he loved getting on the smash. Yeah. So it was my thirtieth, and we Gloucester played Bath. So I'd moved to Gloucester and we were playing at the rec. It was around the 30th. So to it, we, everyone came back to the farm and we'd set up like in one of the indoor schools, like a bar and, um, you know, a human table football and bucking Broncos and all sorts. And um, <laughs> it was always where everything goes wrong. So obviously Barks and Flats are like best mates, but Barks bites Flats as Mrs. Finger, so Flats knocks him out. <laughs> and then HP's wow. just walking around with uh, with two bottles of but the great thing was it was all behind closed doors so no one ever knew yeah. walking around with two bottles of vodka just like drinking from the bottle and anyway the next day the Bulls win uh, his brother wins the Super Bobby. League yeah. so he gets in the car drives up north to go on the, on the smash with his brother on Sunday three days later we're in training where's HP? no one's seen him no one's heard from him <laughs> so like everyone's like trying to ring him just answer phone answer phone and then uh, Dean's like, rings him and he's like, oh, Dean, yeah, I'm really sick. 
he's like, oh, right, what, what, what do you think is the matter with you? He goes, well, I think I've got bird flu. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, right, where are you? He goes, oh, man, I'm in bed. And Dean's like, okay, can you come open the door? I'm at your door. He's like, oh, Dean, sorry, man. I'm up in Bradford. <laughs> I'm still out with my brother. It just didn't ever come back. And then uh, Dean punished it. He never, he never played for Gloucester again. And uh, he basically was the kit boy for really? the rest of his contract. Most expensive kit boy I've ever had. But <laughs> Wow. Um, when, when it can go wrong, it can go wrong. I mean, it I, can go wrong. I'll, I'll um, I mean, this two, two great story. But no, where th- that tours go really wrong, where you know, like someone, you're on tour and like you're like full of energy, you're like, yes, this is going to be amazing. The tours will be brilliant. Guys, like, really excited. On this one particular tour, this guy in particular, like, really excited once we let loose. Not, 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 not the strongest morals. And he, um, obviously somehow had. <laughs> I'd already had a bit of a tour girlfriend and he'd been <laughs> messaging the tour girlfriend, really excited, like, hey, I'm coming back out to see you, da, da, da. not knowing that his phone had connected <laughs> to the iPad at nice. home and his missus had, had read it, seen everything, cancelled his credit card, <laughs> emptied his bank account, done everything. So he's landed in this country, just got his message going, I know exactly what he did, here's this. And turned everything off, and it was like he'd gone from, we're having a tour, <laughs> to, like, all, <laughs> to all week, like completely, uh. yeah. Uh, they, stuff like that. You just and then you're like, have to, boy, he's having to take loans from the lads. Whole, th- you know, no. And also, it's day one of a tour, three week tour. Now you come back to. I mean, one <laughs> one particular bloke, uh, same thing happened. He came back. She'd taken everything, but when I say everything, she took the carpets, took the fixtures <laughs> off the sinks, left him a plate, <laughs> a TV on the floor, and a knife and fork in the middle of it. And took when I say stripped the gaff, shredded his passport. I left and then coming back from that tour going this is amazing love honey I'm hurt uh, honey I'm fine <laughs> I'm finding shit like that mate that's that's, that's loose or leave or that's, it was, the original thing was leaving someone on tour there's a great one uh, I mean obviously there's a few ones where they wake up where you come to their room and they're a real sorry state uh, I mean you know there was a, <laughs> there's a few people who've maybe had a couple of accidents where you know alcohol is slightly worse wear and things have come out both ends and they're sort of embarrassed I think you might <laughs> You might have been on that one. We won't mention his name. But he, uh, that was a poor, one of the, one of the coaches, like, I can't believe it. You know, piss, sick, but poo. <laughs> poo. <laughs> so luckily that's never happened to me. But the poo thing, I mean, I, I was in Poland. I said, um, we went on that tour to Poland and uh, or the pre-season and that was when I my initiation where everyone got me drunk and Sean Edwards, I mean, what, I don't know what's more scary, walking through a po- Polish, Polish wood at night a Polish word when you're 17 steaming or a Polish word when you're steaming with Sean Edwards is your guide and it's only you <laughs> and Sean in this in this thing and he's steaming and he's trying to help, right kid I'll help you back I'm like woohoo like hours you look to Sean Sean's like staring at you where you're walking you're right kid stick with me I'm like yes sir yes sir <laughs> got back um you know, in these kind of uh, terrible quarters where you had like a wafer thin mattress. Wafer thin. Wa- yeah, 500 degree room. I was sharing with Rob Howley, who, you know, d- didn't really drink, ate a lot of sweets, shredded, you know, sort of just a bit of a weird character. I've come in, he's already in bed all night. I'm like, oh, you know, trying to sleep, broken sleep, so dehydrated, drunk all the water, no other water in the, in the hotel. Then that's the next day I had to get up and get on the bus to Auschwitz and sat next to, to Craig Dowd, right? So you're already in hell. Craig Dowd's taken out of the seat, no air conditioning, four-hour bus ride to essentially a museum of death, one of the worst places in the yeah. history of the universe. But as, in the morning, I woke up, I was in hell, and the only other person worse than me was Garth Chamberlain. Garth Chamberlain used to be on this TV program called... Uh, he won some competition and won, won a basic contract to Wasp. It was like a, a, rug, like a challenge thing. It was like filmed for BBC or something where you did all these challenges and he won it. And he didn't really ever drink. And of course, the lads, as soon as you, it's weird. If you said, oh, I'm going to do a load of drugs, everyone would be like, don't do, you know, that, don't do that. It's the only thing, that if you say you don't drink, everyone's like, fuck you, what's wrong with you, prick? <laughs> what's wrong with you? It's the only thing that everyone gets really upset if you don't Especially do it. Rugby, yeah. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, I'm going to do a bit of crack. Well, don't do that, Hask. <laughs> well, I'm not going to drink today. You what? You fucking dickhead. <laughs> fucking might as well fuck off home then. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, Garth Jameson had never drunk before. And he'd got drunk, woke up in the morning, it's like so hungover. I like didn't know what a hungover was. He never had that experience. Like imagine yeah. never experienced the experience of being hungover. He had that. He was in the shower, being sick, crying. And then he, <laughs> and, and, and he's like, oh, he goes, I think I'm dying. Right? His roommate, he's not like, I think he had like Tim Payne, his roommate's like, fucking <laughs> shut up, God. That'd be the worst roommate to have. And then in the night, he drunk tap water. He drunk Polish tap water from a forest and obviously then got dysentery. So was basically crying, being sick, going, I need... An ambulance. They're like, fuck off, <laughs> fuck off, Garth. They don't. 
I'm dying. I need, he thought he was dying. Literally, he'd never experienced that. And you know, it's when you've got senior players. Oh, there's a kerfuffle in there. One of the young lads isn't right. And just these guys with absolutely no medical training. Right. Like, oh, shut the fuck up, Garth. <laughs> You'll be absolutely fine with no qualifications to it. <laughs> so he's just left in the, one of them showers, like, you know, water splash, a little bit of sick coming out of his mouth. And pain. And said, oh, for fuck's sake, Garth, fuck off. <laughs> left him in the room. So he got out of it. He got out of the, 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 the tour of Auschwitz. But he, so he was a, a man left five. But I've never seen someone more broken. He genuinely an ambulance. He thought he was dying because right. he'd never experienced that. Tough times. It leads us on actually to the worst tour sort of like penalties, like the, the, the things that happen to people. So I remember the, I, I, we went back to Aki's. We did a show there when I was in Edinburgh. Yeah. We, we came to play London Scottish ahead of, I think it would have been about 2001 or something like that, or 2002 maybe. I got on the train at Edinburgh, which stopped after half an hour because there was so much snow on the line. So we then got a bus and a seven and a half hour bus journey down to the athletic ground to play London Scottish. We arrived 10 minutes before kickoff, having been sitting on a bus for the best part of the day. We lost by 70 points. They had two kids in the centre, so they played super rugby. Um, and in the post-match celebrations, I, I, can't, I can't remember his name, but the guy, I think it was our fullback, Paul, was starting a new job on the Monday. And so he lost both of his eyebrows, which is not the perfect way to start a new job he was very very unhappy about it he had two months growing them back and as soon as they'd got back to prime position he lost them both again. <laughs> lost them both again <laughs> and it just leads me on to the sort of things where people people come home having lost or been punished or did, I mean, did, that wouldn't be happening now on an England tour no, but, but, but a good a good one for that was Bolsh went Bolsh in our first year at Bath he uh, he played a few more games than me he ended up going to Bordeaux for the final and uh, Volch is he's quite a loose character anyway. So the older boys had uh, like because because we were all again we were good, such good mates with like Vic, Addy, Oge, um, Cassie, Yubago, Adebayo, yeah, the Jomo, the, tr the trio, and uh, <laughs> they were dangerous they, those boys because they just loved going out. They they were proper London sort of sea boys, weren't they? In terms of you know, but they must have, they must have thrown... turned up to training in limos and stuff. Really? <laughs> yeah, Vic, yeah, Vic did from from London, um, and wait, but they so even like Yai and everything they were going to punish Bolsh. You know, like first trip away, he, he obviously was a travelling reserve, He'd, and uh, they absolutely annihilated him on the plane on the way back, and then. We came back and we all met in this pub and Bolsh was absolutely steaming and then and then Vic, Vic and Addy lived together right next right near Puna Nars and they took they went went back there for a sort of a respite and Bolsh basically collapsed and they fake handcuffed him to his ra the, their railings in, in the flat and Bolsh was so steaming he was there for a day and a half not really that he wasn't handcuffed but he never actually tried <laughs> to get the cuffs off. <laughs> and he just thought he was and he was waiting. So they'd come back in and they'd be like, oh, mate, let me, can you let me out? And they're like, no. And then they're just walking around. They had a party around him. Whilst it was a, <laughs> and he was basically there for, I mean, yeah. It's like uh, that scene out of Snatch. Yeah. It's a security door. <laughs> it won't work. <laughs> and then the other time, so, what are you tickets doing here? It's a push door. It won't open. <laughs> Actually, every tour needs a victim as well. Yeah. So we've, we've spoken about best tourists, best tour victims, well, the people who take it and take it and take it and they just don't mind. They just keep coming back. Well, they I mean, know we, that's their role. I mean, one of the, a bit like one me of the, with you two. One of the complaints that leveled it in 2011 when, you know, all the boys did that report and it all got leaked and they were like, you know, they came out and say, you know, talking to the coaches and asking for advice was frowned on. <laughs> right. <laughs> so basically we used to, we were put in charge of like, the social committee and there was like loads of fines. So if you had a dick of the day, we got, we got a hat with a big dick on it, right? So you get lads getting off the bus, mid-tour, when obviously the tour from hell, walk off with a dick hat. We had another guy that if you basically um, used to talk to the coaches or suck at the coaches, you you got the pepper award. So if you blow someone, you have the old pepper technique, like your pepper grinding. So you basically had a big pepper grinder, right? With a big pepper. If you were uh, listening into this, you saw, you didn't get to see Yeah, I got James's, the full... James, <laughs> good James technique, good technique. technique. Yeah, it's a hand technique, yeah. Um, yeah for the young listeners, don't worry about it. For the lads, you probably know about it. Uh, and if you don't, have a word with your missus. Um, a mate or partner, which is open to all things. Um, and he had, a big, he had a big pepper grinder, right, that used to be engraved with your initials. So if you, you know, every day you'd have the, the dick of the day, so that we go, imagine this bus, right? So the whole world media is on it, right? Lads get off the bus. Pepper grinder. Oh, sorry, dick hat. Someone holding a fucking giant pepper grinder with their initials walking off the bus. And then we had a mini pepper that just popped the tip in but hadn't done too much. And I tied a phone cord round this miniature pepper and we'd basically got it engraved. 
And so every time, um, was every time you talk to the coaches, like Brian Smith would walk up and go, hey, champ, and high five you. And <laughs> if you high fived him back, you fucking didn't see a pepper. So he would go, hi, champ, lads, be ducking underneath it, <laughs> leaving, leaving him cold. Everyone was snitching everyone. As soon, we used to this guy called JG or something. He used yeah. to be a prop. Yeah. Uh, is it a prop for uh, Newcastle or something? And he was Johnny like, Golding. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and he was non-stop with Graham Roundtree. <laughs> but he was just bully. Like, he had the pepper every day. He's like, lads, I'm just trying to get better. <laughs> Shut up, you fucking <laughs> you prick. So, yeah, that was that was great. But then, obviously, all that got quickly... Um, and in the complaints, they were like, yeah, no one took it seriously. If you spoke to the coaches, you were abused. There were people walking around with dicks on their hats. <laughs> <laughs> just, Elite. Yeah, and then it, the thing is, that tour in itself, <laughs> when you look at, like, the whole the whole of it, like, where it went wrong... It's like the first day we got to Auckland, all uh, the lads were staying in a casino. Two players lost their entire tour <laughs> fee in the first two hours of being there. It was like it was like they completely forgotten what they were doing. I remember opening my door to hear a kerfuffle and seeing one player holding a poo in a towel, <laughs> <laughs> running running down the thing. And I was like, and you know, like you're you're really jet lagged. New Zealand flight's awful, and you're sort of like that can't be <laughs> that can't be right. And then it escal- was, there not a du- was there not a dust up on the first night as well? Yeah, yeah. I will in, some- a, in, a, in a bar. <laughs> yes, I think so. I've got a poo, lost money. Someone's door got broken off its hinges, right? And that was just when we arrived that in Auckland. That was the hors d'oeuvre <laughs> yeah. of the next two months. Then we got into Dunedin, staying at a hotel with another casino. So the guy doubled down and lost any other future tour- <laughs> tour- fees. There was, you know, like when it was like bad to worse, the manager, and obviously that the hotel made thing happen, which is bollocks. It all went on and then... It, we got back and like, lads, you've got to stop fucking about. And the next day, right, who's left a severed head of a deer in the car park? <laughs> like, what do you mean? And then in between that, you know, they're fining us for having too many Nike ticks on our bag, fining us for having got pro oh, gum yeah. shields. Oh, pro gum shields. Ball tampering. Ball tampering. Because Johnny couldn't hit a barn door with a bazooka. Because <laughs> Dave, Dave Redden, the, the guy that he's kicking guru, was like... Dave Allred. Dave Allred, sorry. Looked like a Louis Vuitton handbag tanned to an inch of his life in a tight fitting polo. He's on the fucking golf course the whole time. It's like, instead of match fixing, how about you give Johnny some help? And they'd written all the balls. Then Bobby got made the scapegoat for that. The man who jumped off a ferry. Then the world media thought Tins was having a fit. Mate, it just went one thing after another until we had to land back at our own private airport or our own private terminal because the media were on us. And everyone's like, oh. <laughs> so lads uh, <laughs> probably all as you're just dispersing catch up later and like, like some people like <laughs> head in hands Johnny uh, Johnny Johnny Gould has tried to leave his pepper oh, pe- don't forget your pepper your prick <laughs> no, don't forget your pepper your prick mate it was honest to God utter fucking carnage can you imagine being the media manager who two months before <laughs> Well, well the best, was, no, the, literally the best thing was we but can sat, you imagine sat trying down to... the day before we travelled and went right lads you know the media are going to be after them. Let's stay really tight and give them nothing. Yeah. Didn't go too much. <laughs> no, yeah, stay really tight. Everyone's selling everyone out. Just left, right and centre, mate. It was, oh, honest to God, it was, it was unbelievable. And then my favourite bits were, were when like, so the Welsh boys were obviously doing really well in the tournament. Got got to the quarters or whatever um, and they lost to France. And um, semis, We yeah. did get to the quarters too. Yeah, we did. Sorry, we got, got to the semis. semis. Got I mean, you got to the semis. semis. But they got to the semis and everyone's like, oh, Wales. And they're like so hard working because Sam Warburton had said, oh, I don't drink. I don't drink. Everyone's like, they thought the whole Welsh team didn't drink. I was like, no, they're pretty much sure they've been on piss every single <laughs> night. And we went bungee jumping. Well, also, because the worst thing was that Nick Easter basically didn't train for the first three weeks because I reckon he hurt his back bungee jumping. <laughs> and and so they got and, fo- they got footage of it. And that was then when Brian Moore jumped in. What are they doing, bungee jumping? And then Tomo rented a bike. And he was like, what's he doing on a bike? Yeah. And all the people, ch- everyone was like coming out with opinions. Yeah, yeah. And then the Welsh boys went quad biking which statistically is way more dangerous than bungee jumping. More people die or injured. And the headlines are like, oh, plucky Welsh enjoying their quad biking day out. Scandalous England in bungee jumping hell. And because we told the media, I said to on the on the, on the day when I knocked on the door, I could hear Tins being sick. Tins, you coming out today? I've never seen him so broke. I was like, oh, right, I'll leave you behind. Went up and did this whole white water rafting thing, did everything. I got there in the end. You got there in the end, he did. Um, and then it was just like, always there, but just slightly late. And uh, they said, oh, you've got to have the media with you on the day. And I said, oh, John, I really don't think it's a good idea. Because who was the guy, who was the media guy? He used to work at Sky, he used to yeah, be a presenter. Um, so, um, it was his first gig. As... It never worked again, did he? Uh... Oh, God, I can remember his name. Uh, he used to be a commentator yeah. for Sky Sports, rugby club era, your mate. Uh, Press, not Prescott, no. no it's he not... was on an oh. Sort so of Simmons' era. Yeah. But, um, Chignall. Chignall. Chiggers. 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 He's lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure I'm his biggest fan anymore, but um, or he's my biggest fan anymore, sorry. 
Poor guy. Um, but Chigger's got obviously he was out there and he said, Oh, we, you know, we want we want Dave um oh, so Dave, someone from um Getty to come with you. I'm gonna take yeah, Dave, Dave Rogers, Rogers, sorry, a man with the best town in the world. Um Dave Rogers and Sky to come with you and film the the so whole we, thing. We were doing sheep shearing, we were doing yeah. gold gold um, gold panning, panning yeah. white water rafting, um uh, canyon swinging, everything. And I said I don't think it's a good idea, John. I said, you know, well, you, you're going to do it. I said, I don't think it's good. You'll do as you're told. I was like, all right. So we took them. So as we're up, obviously bungee jumping. Everyone's giving it large. I'm jumping off with like fingers to my mouth going, shh, lads are doing backwards. Everyone's having a riot, which is fine until all the hell goes break loose. Yeah. And then they're using the photos, England players, in, you know, arrogant, don't give you a shit on Mike Tyndall, stag do. And it's just everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. And then Manu, just the pièce de resistance, <laughs> <laughs> on a boat trip to what... Um, why, uh, Waiheke Island. Yeah, I was downstairs with my my girlfriend, and I just saw this giant shadow go swizzing past the window, <laughs> and then <laughs> <laughs> what? body in the water, body in the water. <laughs> and we're like, what was that? Get out! All the Leicester boys are in hysterics. Hysterics. <laughs> Dan Cole's holding Manu's clothes. I'm like, what the fuck's happened? Oh, we said to Manu, I bet you wouldn't jump in. Manu goes, hold my beer, and literally <laughs> leapt in, and you just see him, and it was like that scene out the in between is where there's. You know, there's a shoreline. Yeah. And if you think it's amazing, you're like, yes, go on, man, you swim. But man, he's not very good at swimming. And also, it was quite a far distance and there's boats going everywhere. <laughs> it was quite and a busy, t- quite busy, a busy thing. And after about five minutes, he's still only two foot away from the boat. So you're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh go. 20 minutes later, he's, he's slightly to drown. You're like, this <laughs> is not great. And then he's hauled out of his pants. I'm like, wow, this is going to go well. Imagine going back to the hotel and John are going, oh. What could possibly go <laughs> go wrong? Oh, man has jumped to the ferry and they've photographed it and they've seen it and now we're dust. Mate, it was <laughs> insane. I don't know what, but it was like, I don't understand. It was just it was small cumulative things that just added up to utter... And then Dylan's whizzing around in, that, in his Vauxhall Victor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> trying to put Ash in a wheelie bin so he goes down the hill. Mate, it was, um, it was amazing. Then we went to that house, all the students. And we'll, <laughs> I'll never forget. You know, you look back at moments that didn't get talked about. Yeah. On how, a day much, how much more could have come out of that? Oh, oh. Did, or was, was most of it too, yeah, I think most of it, most of it I think was. Most, yeah. I mean, I think it was one afternoon where myself and two other lads are sitting on a roof in the middle of Dunedin, a student house roof, actually on the roof. We've climbed up on a ladder on the roof, which is pretty yeah. dangerous. Stuff. We're throwing water bombs at other students. I remember there was this little nerdy sort of like gingery kid. <laughs> And I, you know, I was not the most accurate throw, but I timed this water balloon. And it was like slow motion. It hit his head and sort of bent round it <laughs> and then exploded. And I was like, yeah, we're having a great time. I was like, I'm an England player on tour. Like, what were we doing? What I don't know what it was, but it was just because Dun- Dun- Dunedin was so boring. That was the problem. Yeah. The, the hotel was like fashionable in 1934. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, yeah, I don't think anything else would could have come out really. I don't, I don't, well, might have been a few. Compare and contrast touring as a player and the World Cup in Japan in 2019, oh, what we'll do next year in France, et cetera, et cetera. Because I've done four Lions tours with a number of people you've mentioned, and it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. I mean, uh, Japan for us was uh, was so much fun, wasn't it? We yeah. had... You got nothing, it, it, because that's it, what you're it, there to do. It, it built our it built our friendships to a, a whole different level. When I talk about building bonds and yeah. and everything else, well, I've still got pictures from you from Party On, which, which was, was a, that? A, oh, that was a yeah. weird place where it was. We went there two nights in a row. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I didn't. Have, well, it was still the same day for me. <laughs> yes, that's very true. I think I went with you, went home to bed, and did a day's work, and then came back. And you were still at the same table. <laughs> Do you remember how good karaoke was? Like you'd never, yeah. you'd never say, "Oh, I want to level." I want to have a night out, and I want to do karaoke. I thought we gash. It was. We ended up with the winner of Japan's pop idol, uh, 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 Crystal K. Crystal the uh, Crystal K, Crystal the, one of the most famous singers in Japan. Yeah, singing Mariah Carey, and me and you go, "Bloody hell, she's, she's good. good, isn't she?" <laughs> and then I, then I, I said to. Um, uh, uh, I used to work for ISPS Handa and I did I spoke to Midori and I was like oh yeah we're doing it was random we're doing karaoke with a girl called Crystal K she was like fuck off you were I was like yeah why who's Crystal K she's like probably Japan's best yeah. so- singing artist <laughs> and we were like oh actually you can sing Mariah Carey yeah. quite well yeah. I can yeah. tell you that there was one night when my friends came over do you remember that yes, the- oh god that's my- that, was the- that was the night with the Canadians <laughs> yeah oh yeah. yeah that was and they came over and I I basically was still up at eight o'clock in the morning and then it was pouring with rain in Japan and I was in a t-shirt and trousers. I, I'd forgotten that. Yeah. yeah, like standing in the middle of a, uh, trying to get a taxi and taxis were looking at me and just driving past. 
And I was honestly like so wet. I was, I was beyond wet. It was like I'd been swimming. All these taxis, they wouldn't stop. I was like, please, please. I had to literally stand in the middle of the road to get one to stop. But it, but that, they, that was so funny. You'd be at so many traffic lights late at night. You're doing a, a 1 a.m. walk home and there'd be a taxi that'd pull up and then a Japanese guy would stick his head out, spew on the floor <laughs> and shut the door <laughs> yeah. because they all just yeah. got absolutely yeah. They mortal. all fall asleep on their briefcase yeah. just to yeah. have a little snooze for yeah. the night. It was, but it was it also bad because every, every rugby player that's ever played the game was staying yeah. in the middle of, uh, what was the area called? The... Um, uh, Shinjuku or no? No. Shibuya? No, Shibuya is the junction, crossing, isn't it? Where, what's the, uh, Rupongi? R- Rupongi? Rupongi. Yeah. Yeah. Every single rugby player was staying in Rupongi. And there was a there was a place called Cl- Club 2212 or something. It was like everyone meeting at the clubhouse. And you go in there and literally, World Cup, <laughs> there's literally again, World Cup winners, uh, you know, 100 cappers, just, just around this bar. Everyone would walk in and go, Mad. What? And then yeah. that bar would just kick off every night, so it'd be like, "Oh, I'll see you at the clubhouse." I mean, I'd say that was a much more enjoyable tour. No pressure of playing, yeah. yeah. No pressure of doing anything. Media didn't matter because it doesn't matter. <laughs> no cares. That was, you know, oh, James has to miss bathing again. It doesn't matter. No. Um, so I'd say that's much but, more fun. But also, I got we got out far more and actually saw the place. Obviously, yeah. we we did Hir- Hiroshima, Hir- Hiroshima, 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 um, and we went up to um, when England were playing in the quarters. We went up to uh, Oita and yeah. and. Yeah, you know, yeah, we were going around the places where they wouldn't let you in because you have tattoos. You're like, you don't want to come in here, and we're like, well, okay, we won't. It's <laughs> moving on, and you know, um, it, it was, you know, everything that sometimes you don't generally do on a tour because no one believes you when you go. Oh, you've been all over the place, tour. Yeah, but you see a rugby pitch, a team room, and a, a bus, and a bus, yeah. and that's about it. Whereas we, I like, I loved our tour because you actually get to go around and see anything and the fantastic railway system. <laughs> I would say, I would say it's the best tour I've ever been on. 2019? Yeah. Oh, mate. I think it's up there. I, what I'm saying t- is media trumps it, playing. I think yeah. it, it was spoiled a little bit because you were still in your fighting phase. So you'd yes. always disappear off to get your head kicked in by someone. And then, <laughs> yeah. I and then you'd come back with bruises. The thing is, that's funny. If you th- I, th- I think about that now. I was, do- I was going mid-tour doing jiu-jitsu three times a week with that guy and then come back. Um, out, for, out for lunch. Out for lunch. <laughs> come back. Out, do something else. Or cool. fighting. Yeah. Out for lunch. <laughs> out for lunch. The <laughs> thing about Japan that was so extraordinary is how... In that, so we were there for three weeks, I think. The first two weeks, the number of times we were utterly broken at seven o'clock at night, meet downstairs, it's going to be 15 minutes, we're all in bed and the lights out by eight. And we go out for a ramen at seven <laughs> and they just pop a little, what's, what's the... Um, sake. Little sake in front of you. <laughs> but that was the... That was and the, then next thing you knew, it's 4 a.m. and you're in some <laughs> sort of day glow <laughs> nightclub with absolutely no idea you how know what you we got did? there. We, the, that was the combination we created was a, a lager with a sake chaser. Yeah. That's what we had every single meal. And so we were, we were basically doubling up on alcohol and it just went down so well because they had little glasses. So you think and the fact that you could go into any restaurant, it might look like the biggest dive and you still get a killer, killer yeah. ramen. Yeah. There's a cockroach walking past it, but it still tastes so yeah. delicious. Oh. I've never been in a city which picks you up and carries you into the night. Quite yes, like Tokyo. I'd say it's the best city in the world. And you have amazing. to look up and down rather than just left and right because yes. there's you, you might miss some And then you have to look over your runner. shoulder. <laughs> <Blade runner. laughs> France 2023 has got a lot to live up to. Um, we were going to talk about our tour. I'm actually really looking forward to it. This has energised me yes. for the next month or well, so. Well, I said that. I said, actually, we could get our listeners to... If we go through the tour where we're going and where we'll be driving, yes. some suggestions. Of Actually, that would be fun really, things we really should be doing helpful. on our on our drives between shows, because uh, obviously the first week is is jam packed between Sheffield, Liverpool, uh, Manchester, Edinburgh, Newcastle, Cardiff, Edinburgh, or something. Newcastle. So that's, that's a really good shout. If any if, clubs as well need me to DJ as an after party? Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> if, <laughs> dear listeners, you've got any good suggestions as we tour. Uh, throughout the month of May, let us know. We start in Sheffield on the 29th. We go Liverpool, Edinburgh, Cardiff, Newcastle, Manchester, Nottingham, Plymouth, Swansea, Dublin, one or two good places to go there, <laughs> Oxford, Birmingham, London, Bath and South End. Let us know where we should be going. Uh, keep us posted. If you are coming along to the theatre tour, we are very much looking forward to seeing you. Um, we are putting out a call because part of the show is going to involve you, dear listeners, and your best rugby story or stories. It can be about absolutely anything, however tenuous the link to the game that we love, but it's got to have a chance of trumping uh, one of your two stories from today. Some pretty strong <laughs> opening gambits, I will say. It's a warm-up as well. Yeah. It's a warm-up. Yeah, we sort of started without knowing where we were going today. Uh, keep an eye on our socials this week for how to get involved and to pitch your story if you're coming along. Just on the tour thing, we need restaurant spot, yeah. Night out spot. Yeah. 
um, and something you should definitely daytime do. Daytime activities. Daytime activities in each one of those places. Yeah. And if I would say message the Good Bad Rugby. Oh, we got one, we got an email? Do we have an email that people um, can contact us? Yeah. Uh, info at goodbadrugby.com. But you can't make one up. I think, I think that is a thing. Oh, right. There should be one on our website, actually. Um, or send it through socials. Yeah, send it through yeah. socials or to the Good Bad Rugby socials. We need to know that. Because actually, I've, I've become obsessed with Guinness. I follow a guy called the Guinness Guru. And he goes around grading pints. That's one I'm very excited about going to Dublin. Oh, is that the... Um... What's it called? That the well, thing? there's one called there's one called shit pint of Guinness, and, yeah. and but he he's a reviewer, but the Guinness guru I really like, and he goes round and he, and he uh, chooses you know the the, the best kind of Guinness. He's actually done a couple of reviews in London. There's um, the oh, something grill near a Barclay Square does a good one, and the two can apparently up in Soho. So I'm quite excited on tour if there's a location with a key pint of Guinness. Just okay. to, other alcohol is available, and the Guinness don't sponsor us. But um, I've quite nice one. just checked the website, info at goodbadrugby.com yeah. does exist. And it, actually sales at goodbadrugby.com if you want to sponsor so us. Info and, at goodbadrugby.com for any... And if you realise that we're not doing a good show, production at goodbadrugby.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> info at goodbadrugby.com for your restaurant suggestions, location suggestions, nightclub suggestions, and if you want to book me for DJ while we're <laughs> <on> tour to, <laughs> to, blow the night, to blow the coffee. But if you do do the production when you get a very angry coffee, Shira, yeah. Yeah. coffee hot spots. Well. Coffee hot spots as well. Oh, yeah, please. Yeah. I've got the best coffee. Oh, I've got... Yeah. Coffeeology. No, it's called, no, go. The app's called Best Coffee. All oh, right, but it does find you the best coffee. Okay. Um, just to wrap up the touring element of this week's show, we have, as we've mentioned a couple of times before, teamed up with Vodafone in partnership with the British and Irish Lions to support grassroots clubs' return to rugby. This Saturday, the twenty third of April, we are heading across the bridge to Aberdeer RFC. The Aberdeer Minis are running out. For whom I'm hopefully have, gonna have a game. Tins doesn't get all the glory. Um, <laughs> we're gonna be on call to put them through their paces and get the match ready. And after a day full of rugby, we're going to be doing a big old live show in the clubhouse in the evening, which apparently is sold out. Uh, mm. And to top it off, Richard Hibbard and Fionn Lewis are coming down as well. So looking forward to seeing both of them. Do you have a tour with Hibbs? Was he a good tourist? 2013. No, I didn't. Unfortunately, I didn't know. Just want to get the story out about his hair again because you know he never cut his hair during the season. That was the whole that thing. Right? Did he like, play with him at Gloucester? It's a Samson thing. He, like, he thinks that he Is loses that right? his strength if he cuts his hair during the season. So he'd have it cut like really? once a year, yeah. He was... Uh, he was. I never v- played. He started the year after I retired. Right? He was mighty fine in that third test in 2013. Um, looking forward to do, welcoming those two, as we said. A big thank you to Vodafone, who are driving this, and to further their support of grassroots rugby, they're also developing a resource on their V-Hub for all community clubs across the UK and Ireland. This will help small businesses developing their digital capabilities following the pandemic, which we'll know is much needed. Keep your eyes peeled for a brilliant toolkit if that's your thing. We are set for a bumper day. Can't wait to get stuck in. And if you're in the area, as always, we would love to see you down at Aberdeer Rugby Club this Saturday. Come and get involved. A very quick word on the Champions Cup round of 16 tins. Home and away fixtures. Ellis wasn't a fan, but we've had some belting Two leggers. Yeah, I, listening to a few. And it does change people's mindsets, doesn't it, when they know exactly what they've got to do. And, you know, if people 19 points behind, um, yeah, they're always going for the corner rather than taking points. It's funny how people sort of uh, adapt their tactics. It made for some great, great ties in the end. Obviously, Quinn's unfortunately losing by a single point a mis- late misconversion wasn't it by Mark Smith but he also set up that worldy of a try for yeah. Marchant um, you know which is always what you want to see but it, you know there were so many games that ended up being tight because over the aggregate which is is what you want so I think actually in terms of entertainment even though the players might not like it I think the entertainment didn't really let anyone down did it yeah um, you know and it brings us on you know, Toma Park, uh, you know, when we go, th- uh, it is Toma Park. You, yeah, you, he's almost convinced Thomond. me Thomond. Yeah, Toma Park. Um, you know, Thomond there's going to be some great quarterfinals. Um, well, there's not going to be one at Thoman Park because Ed Sheeran's got the gig. Oh, <laughs> so they've so, got to play at Aviva. Munster Toulouse apparently is going to take place at the Aviva. Racing 92 uh, will start as favourites against Sale. Montpellier La Rochelle is going to be fascinating. But I think all eyes in this part of the world will be on Leicester Leinster. <laughs> That's a big game. That's a it? huge game. That is a big game. It would be. F- I mean, we keep talking about the fact that it's great to see Leicester back at the top table, not only in the Premiership but also of Europe as well. But if you that ever, is, and also, are they good enough to do that? I think so. If, but if you ever wanted confirmation of how we thought the Six Nations would go, you've got you, you've got three to actually, four from France, two four, from England, and, and two, two from Ireland. Ireland. So and pretty much how it yeah how it dusts out. I didn't actually see sail at the top. I thought it was one. I thought it was nicely going to be, yeah. um, but. Yeah, I th- look, I think Racing still, you know, Finn Russell looked amazing, some of the stuff he did. I mean, but they did, he did that break and then he tried to 
chip it and he got tapped and he sort of gave up and then Vianu just picked the ball up and ran through and scored. It's like, maybe you should have not switched off. But, yeah. but then he makes that try where he, uh, with the red card, uh, where he just goes through a gap. He's just so good at playing close to the line. I think Sale will have their work cut out there really to to beat them in France. Yeah, um, that's going to be very tough. Montpellier, La Rochelle, you know, Montpellier squeaked through in the end. Um, Rog have... looking to pick up and go one better than yeah. last year with La Rochelle. So we'll, we'll see. I'm, I, I wouldn't know, I, I, if I'm honest, I don't follow all the form of what's going on in in, uh, in their league, but, uh, you know, La Rochelle played some great rugby and uh, we talked about um, the number eight for... Zach Mercer. Mercer. Zach Mercer and how well he's playing. So, yeah, you know, people are going to keep an eye on that because one he's now a story. One three in the top 14, Montpellier top. He's now a there. a story to watch from an England perspective as well because he's he's banging on the door, which means he won't get picked. Um, and then I think Toulouse obviously haven't played that well, but I, I still think they'll get through that game against against Munster. I think their class will yeah come through come in the to end. The boil. Dupont and then terrible, 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 and amazing. Then, and then probably the two best teams uh, in the UK for sure uh, at the moment going head to head. So uh, it's a bit it's a massive challenge for Leicester to even think that they'd be in this position last year uh, and what Bolton has done uh, and they're playing unbelievably well you know yeah. they've they dispatched um, they, they dispatched whoever they played on the weekend uh, Claremont <laughs> yeah they, they did, did the double on the mat and yeah so they dispatched it, Claremont on the weekend obviously a, a famous team well famous losing finalists but uh, in terms of in terms of but how the quality of rugby that they play and to dispatch them home and away yeah. in quite comfortably in, in control fashion I think I think Leicester are in a good position to take on Leicester. Yeah. I never thought I'd keep a keen eye on Leicester uh, growing up in Bath, but given how Ellis is faring, and it is great to see them back. And obviously they take on Quinns in the Prem this weekend as well. And Exeter travelled to take on Saracens, so top four all going head-to-head. One other quick line, um, and a, a raising of the cap to Dan Norton. Yes. Who has retired from England Sevens with a remarkable 358 tries. In the sevens format. Same as me, if you count training tries. <laughs> <laughs> me too, actually. Uh, he also represented GB and won an Olympic silver medal. Um, he has dipped in and dipped out of the 15s game. He's obviously been at Bristol. He was at Gloucester for a bit, I think, as well. Uh, London Irish most recently. And on Twitter, Ben Ryan said, so many great memories that Dan's provided. It was one of my easiest decisions as England coach to give him his debut many years ago in New Zealand. He classed team first attitude and athleticism stood out top top man and he's a lovely guy yeah, really lovely guy he's brilliant, brilliant man. and he was unbelievably rapid yeah. he was a sh- I mean he was obviously in, our, in the Gloucester Academy and you wanted to try and keep him for 15s but he, he was just so good at, at sevens we were never gonna with Sinbad and the wingers that we had he was always it was always gonna be a hard for him to crack in there before sevens sort of swallowed him up and then he yeah. But also the good thing about Dan is is his finishing ability. You know, no, it's not just out and out speed. Yeah. It's he's got the chip and chase, he's got the run, he's got yeah. the skills, he's, he can change direction while still going at full pelt. Yeah. That's mad. Some especially in the sevens field, just some of the things he did to yeah. people were ridiculous. I quite like the fact that he said in his farewell interview with Willie Lose, you know, he's obviously he's loved every minute as a player, he's loved annoying everybody that is gone. And all of his former teammates went, You are an amazing player, but you are also undoubtedly the most annoying person I've ever <laughs> talked with, played with, etc. So at least he knows where he comes out. Yeah. Uh, well done, Dan, on a remarkable career. And no doubt we'll see you on the circuit before too long. The final thing that we want to do this week is to say good luck, go forth and conquer Skaz. 100th cap. Yeah. Oh, fingers crossed. Incredible. This yeah. It is remarkable, isn't it? Was yeah. it 2008 she made her debut? You, did, you, did you do the show this week where you were talking about that? Yes. Um, 2008 to, to 2022. Well, that's a good stint, isn't she it? She doesn't look a day of a 21 as well. It's well, no. really irritating. Oil of you laying yeah. healthy routines. Early nights. Early nights. Um, no, tour, no tours to Japan or <laughs> yeah. under 21 tours to France. Absolutely. So, quite, actually, I'm going to definitely bring that up on the next Good Scares about the tour stories because they've got, I mean, yeah. Yeah. if you ever go to a local rugby club, the women's, t- the women's team are the noisiest. Oh, and the yeah. loosest. And the yeah. loosest. Um, there is a very good show Good Scaz and Rugby if you haven't listened to it all about Scaz and 100th Cap I think yeah. you guys forced her to talk about it I've got one I've got one, I just suddenly had one flashback from Saturday night I was in the I was in the toilet at this particular place and um, as I walked out I saw this guy come and like try, you know like when people were trying to get in your eye line and I was shit faced talking to lads didn't really know what's going on he's like trying to get in my eye line I just ignored him right so I thought it was a kid anyway later that night I stood against the wall just chatting to the boys and this guy came over 
And it's hard because it's a podcast as well as a video, but the guy was like, <sighs> I'm like, you right, mate? He goes, uh, and I went, what? And he went, Southwest 16s. And I was like, what, what, what about that? He goes, we play to get a Southwest 16s. He can't believe you don't remember me. And I, and I was like, try and wait for a hint of sarcasm. And he wasn't, he was deadly serious. And then when I went, oh, sweet, cheers, bro, and turned back to talk to someone else, he was <laughs> utterly mortified. So I'd like to apologize to whoever the hell you were, whatever you're trying to talk about, but I'm going to need a little bit more detail than Southwest 16s because I'm 37 and Southwest 16s was a long, long time ago. ago, but it was genuinely, it's the way he went, are you, and it was just like, I should have recognized him. Yeah. I was like, mate, what are you doing? It's steaming. It, it was, it's like 1.30 in the morning and that was his opening gambit and he was mortified. <laughs> I reckon he would go with my, I would go with the potentially the biggest Norse moment of a history. Right. Southwest 16s. Not even England on the 16s. It's Southwest 16s. If there's 16s. any consolation to him, probably half of the people you've played for your country with should come up and say <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Remember them, so. That's what I mean. But I'm sorry, whoever you were, you're probably a fan of the show um, if you've got any taste. Um, I want to apologise. Whoever you were, I'm sorry, mate. I was very drunk and I had no idea. And I'll be honest with you, even on a cold light of day with a good moon behind me, I still wouldn't know who the hell you are. But I appreciate it and I apologise because if I did know your name and did look at the photo, I'm sure I would have had some were fond you good, memories. Were you good for Southwest? No, nah, South probably not. I don't think so. Right. I don't. Do you want to, <laughs> it's that long ago. <laughs> don't remember it. Um, commiserations to you, um, my friend. Well done to Skaz on 100th cap. Well done to Dan Norton on a remarkable career. Well done to Leicester, who are chomping through the good stuff this season. Shall we leave it there? We're going to do a show next week, aren't we? And then we're off on tour. Yeah. 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 Wherever you're going on your tours this year, send us a picture, actually. Uh, tag us into... Uh, can you do that? Yes, tag yes, us can. in on at Good Bad Rugby. We'd love to see what you're getting up to. I hope you have as much fun as these two Any have tour the stories as well, yeah. send them to info at goodbadrugby.com. Yeah. Yes, tour Minch, stories. Stay safe. Yeah, that's, stay safe. How desperate are you? If you could go on tour with Minch under a, a meter embargo, not, would you do I'm it? I'm not actually sure where they're going. I'll probably look on the app and tell you. I think there's probably better places to go. Like if you went, oh, would you like to go on tour with Maidenhead or Ibiza? I'd be like, I'm already in Ibiza, but just speak to you later. <laughs> yeah, but Tins is a man of the people and still likes playing. Wow. I think actually, do you know what? I think Tins overdoes it with the people. Like, I'm going to be interested to see on tour, like 16 dates. Like, he's too nice. He, he, he reverse hot potholes the potholes. So, pot, that's, <laughs> that's a brilliant if tactic. You, if you're coming in, you say, that's what I mean. really knows you out. That's what I mean. Like, people come and talk to me. I'm like, I'm polite, nice, but then I just, I don't know what you're really interested about your old war stories and I, and I leave. People come to pothole tins and then they can't get out and then, and then they're making excuses oh is that the time I've got to go and tins is like got them in dragging around all night I've never seen it but there's really the, Sean O'Brien's a reverse pothole as well congratulations on his amazing career yes, he's obviously retiring well, Shawnee. what a boy what a character what a man um, but yeah I'm interested to see how the, whether that wears off because he's just too friendly and I just float between the two of you trying to prevent you from killing people and trying to get him out of conversations <laughs> well, where his guests want to go and actually we, we know we in in, 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 the, in uh, where was it um, Bannockburn we had a role reversal didn't we or in Edinburgh we had a role reversal I wanted to stay out and Tins wanted to go home because yeah, Tins hadn't been fed that is a brilliant photo <laughs> that is a brilliant photo <laughs> Right. Any more for any more? We done and dusted. No, no. Let me get done. some food. I can't find out where the Minch boys are going on tour yet. Well so. done, everybody. Thank you for joining us this week. Um, have a very good rest of it. We have been the Good, the Bad, and the Rugby. We will see you next Wednesday. This show is produced by Shara Kilgallen. The Good, the Bad, and the Rugby is a folding pocket production. Have a goodie.